Hello, maths fans. My name is David Malin, and I'm a professor of computer science at Harvard, where I teach a course called CS50, which is Harvard's introduction to the intellectual enterprises of computer science and the art of programming. And I'm here today with Dr. Tom Crawford. Um, the, the accent was quite something. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, much appreciated. I hope you all appreciated that too. That was really, really quite special. It's an absolute pleasure uh, to have you on the channel, David. Yes, thank you um, for having me to your well, channel here. He's taking over already. <laughs> um, so no, you are in Oxford at the moment, and you said you would be happy to teach me a little bit of computer science. Yes, happy to. So, so as, as David mentioned, he runs the brilliant CS50, which is an introduction to computer science. I am a mathematician. These two disciplines are very closely aligned, but yet very different. Yes, yeah. indeed. But then very much, CS very much has its origins in math. In fact, it wasn't until 1988 that at Harvard, at least, we even had a computer science department. Prior to that, it was in applied mathematics instead. Yeah. So, um, so I have never formally taken a computer science course. Perfect. But yet, hopefully know the maths. So we'll see how that kind of... <laughs> I don't know, I'm setting myself up to fail, but anyway, I'm very excited to see what no you've pressure. got for me. So what, what are we doing? All right, well, let me ask a question first. What is computer science as you now understand it? Um, my initial thought would be to say the, how computers work, okay. but not in a sense of the electrical components and the sort of building a computer, okay. but the idea of there is code, there are algorithms, they are solving problems by kind of sifting and sorting through data. Okay. So to me, the computer science of it is understanding and how all of that infrastructure is kind of there behind the scenes. Okay, yeah. So maybe using infrastructure, using technology to solve problems, to analyze data, and more generally than data, really information. And so that's maybe yep. the simplest way to think about computer science. It's the study of information. And when we t introduce computers into the mix, we can actually take that information as input. We can produce new information as output. That is to say, solve problems with it. And so in fact, a lot of students actually typically say that uh, computer science is programming, because that's how you tend to see it yep. in college or university uh, or it, in um, secondary school but in reality like programming and computers are really just a tool via which we can solve these problems and mm. case in point when computer science was still applied mathematics it was very much still paper pencil and the machines were being introduced to help you solve certain yes. types of problems so let me propose in the spirit of computer science being about solving problems that the way <laughs> we paint a picture of computer science in the beginning of cs50 and what we call week zero since cs people start counting at zero of is course. literally i'll draw like a black box on the board i'll draw an arrow coming in from the left and an arrow going out on the right, and then I'll propose to students that we can think of computer science really as just this, problem solving, distilled into its essence. Yep. And by essence, I mean any problem has input, the first arrow there on the left, any problem ideally has a solution, like output there on the right, and in the middle is that proverbial black box where if we, even if we don't really understand like what's going on inside there right now, Hopefully in a few minutes, we will. <laughs> yes. But the catch is, I think, for us to have this conversation and sort of assume this mental model, we need to agree in advance, like, what language to use or just what system to use to represent the inputs and the outputs yep. to and from this problem. So you and, of course, and I are both speaking English here, but I think we should really distill it into something that computers can better represent. Because mm -hmm. um, it turns out in computers, they can absolutely speak English or generate English or any number of other human languages nowadays. But you you probably know underneath the hood that computers really only, only really only understand what vocabulary ones and zeros binary. yeah so ones and zeros binary by yeah, implying yeah, yeah. two and indeed you have these two symbols two digits only zero and one that technically speaking don't even have to be zero and one it could be a and b black yeah. or white you really just need two states yes so if we only have zeros and ones inside of our computers how do we possibly count higher than two <laughs> See, I know the answer because I know the maths. Oh, all right. You're asking the wrong person. Well, let me propose that you, or maybe some of the viewers online, yeah. like don't actually know. If you only have zeros and ones, how can you actually count higher? Because indeed, even with zeros and ones, you can count as high as you might want. Yeah. So let me ask you then, softball math question. What is this number here? Uh, in English, 123. Very good. So we study the same maths. Yes. So, but why is it 123? Because obviously any of us in an instant know what we're looking at. But at least in the U.S. and maybe here too, you know, we learned that the rightmost digit is in the so-called ones column. Yeah. The middle is the... The tens. The, and the tens, tens column. Tens. Yeah. So in the one hundreds columns. And if we really want to geek out, we can actually rewrite this as not ones, tens, and one hundreds, but rather... 
we can say 10 to the zero power, which yeah. is one, and this is 10, of course, to the one, and this yeah. is, of course, 10 to the two. <laughs> two. Okay. <laughs> to think about that for longer than I thought. No, not a trick uh, question. And so the reason that we get 123 is that technically on the board here, we just have three symbols, a one, a two, and a three, or three strokes of the marker, but really it's one in the 100s column, plus two in the tens column, plus three in the uh, ones column, which gives you 100, plus 20, plus three, which of course is? 123. Exactly. So we're sort of back where we began, but reminding everyone of this mental model that we all yeah. learned in, in grade school, perhaps. So we're like, would it then be correct to, to take the, the binary model then of saying the zeros or ones and be able to represent any number? What we're doing with our number system then is we have zero through to nine. Mm, yes. And that's actually, because we only have 10 different symbols, but yet we can represent yeah, that's actually a perfect point, because yeah. how would you possibly count to 10 then, or yeah. 11? To take your original question, right? You've, yeah. only got, you've only got 10, 10 symbols, not to 9. How do you go higher than that? Yeah, indeed. And so it, place, yeah. that's the so-called decimal yeah, yeah. system, and deck implying yeah. 10 is 0 through 9. All right, so if I take away then your 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 digits, like how can we keep counting? Well, let me propose that in binary, the world of computers, a uh, computer wonderfully represents the number 0, like this, maybe with three <laughs> zeros, for instance. Yeah. So this is zero in binary, so not, not so hard yet. Uh, let me propose that in computers, this is how they represent the number one, zero, zero, one. So not that hard yet. Now, yeah. of course, in our human world, I'd be inclined to write a two, but I've taken away the two. Yeah. So how would you propose we could actually use just zeros and ones and represent two? So if I'm to follow the pattern you just gave me with the tens and the decimals, this was 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 squared. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to assume 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 squared. Yes. Just perfect. take what I know and convert it to 2. Base yes, two. exactly. Because, yeah. And that's why we were using base 10, so to speak, because you were giving yourself 10 digits. Yeah. But if we're only using 2, the base changes. And in fact, I'll, I'll write this out. So instead of having 2 to the 0, and then 2 to the 1, and then 2 to the 2, well, let's just actually multiply this out for clarity, so we don't have to think too hard about all of these exponents. This, of course, gives me the ones column still, yep. but not the tens column, the twos, twos column and the, fours. and the fours column. All right, and so we see already here evidence of why this 0, 0, 1 is 1 in the so-called yep. binary system, because you have a 1 in the ones yep. column. All right, so now here's your turn. Let's go ahead and get rid of my 0, 0, 1. How do I now count to 2 in binary? Uh, we need one of those, for sure, and then All right. zero fours and zero ones. All right, and let's go ahead and put a 1 in the 2's column and a 0 in the 4's. So zero, zero, 1, 0. 0, 1, 0. All right, so another challenge problem. How do we count as high as 3 in binary? Uh, so again, we're going to need the 2. We can't have a 4 because it's going to be too much. Too big. So we need the 2, and then we're going to need an additional 1. Okay, so, so 0, 1, 1. To 1. All right. Challenge problem. How do we count to 4? Uh, we need one of those, and then 0, 0. So 1, 0, 0. All right, so 1, 0, 0. Oh, sorry, 1, Sorry, oh, zero, zero. Right. Ah, see, so binary is hard. All right, so <laughs> one, zero, 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 and zero, because we need a one in the fours place, zero in the twos, and zero yes. in the ones, despite what I previously thought. All right, so now let's accelerate this a little bit. If I only have given you three digits, otherwise known as binary digits, or bits for short, one, zero, zero, or any pattern thereof, how high can we count with just three bits? Um, the most you can have here is one of these and one of those, and one of those. Okay. So 4 plus 2 plus 1 would be 7. Yeah, that's a really good way to think about it. So we now have a 1, 4, plus 1, 2, plus 1, 1, which indeed gives us 7. Yep. All right, so now the actual challenge problem would be, how do you count as high as 8 in a computer? You need a new space. Yeah, so this is where you start to carry a digit. You need yep. another uh, another column. And so that column should be what? Normally it would be the, the, t the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands place, but we don't want thousands here. So 2 to the 3, so 8. So we have the eights place, so we need another bit, so to speak. Yep. And if I want to count to eight, do I just go ahead and do this? But now you need zero, zero, zero. Ah, right. So if I want to actually count only the eight, I need to do one, zero, 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 yep. zero as you say. Dare I ask how high we can count with four bits? I'm going to assume uh, we, the most we can have is one of everything. So eight okay. plus four plus two plus one. So that's 12, 14, 15. 15 with four bits. Yep. So I'll go ahead and do this. Go ahead and do this. One, one, one. And so here, we now have four bits, all of which are one, which gives us indeed 15. Yeah. So we don't have to draw this out, but since you are the mathematician, <laughs> if I had eight bits, yep. 
the one's place two to the seven all the way to the 128th place yeah how high could we count uh 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 Right. Oh, so we do a quick edit is, here so that no, we can... 255. It is 255. <laughs> I know the formula. <laughs> so in that, it's actually no coincidence that I'm using 8 bits because that's known as a byte. So a byte is just 8 bits, which yeah. is just a common unit of measure. And so if a computer is using 8 bits, the highest it can count, if we ignore negative numbers for now, is 255. Yeah. But let me reconcile one thing mathematically. Technically, 2 to the 8th power is 256. Mm -hmm. But I'm suggesting we can't count as high as 256. Why can we only count to 255? Similarly, why can we only count to 15 here instead of 2 to the 4, which is 16? Because we don't yet have that additional space. Correct. But more Because we're starting indexing at zero. That's the catch, right. right. So if you start, want to represent the number zero, you're sort of spending one of those patterns yeah. Yeah, on yeah, this yeah. zero representation. So that's great. So I dare say that if I give you more and more bits, you can count higher and higher and yeah. higher. And assuming you have an infinite amount of memory, which in the reality you don't, <laughs> like your computer could count as high as yeah. it needs to. So one more challenge problem. In computer science circles, most people should kind of know what how high you can count with 32 bits. Two to the 32. Oh, God. Um, I think it's like billions. Okay, how many billions? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could continue to double numbers, but I want to guess. Oh, so I don't, because it doesn't work nicely, right? Because you get to 1,024, I think. Yeah, that's in the, the two-bit cycle. So, oh, God. Mm. Would you, I, I honestly don't know. I'm going to guess like... I want to say it's going to be something like 8 billion, but there's going to be bits after, other numbers after it. So close. He just gave us 33 bits. So it's oh, actually it's roughly, four. it's 4 billion. Okay. It's 4 yeah. billion. And if we actually do take into account negative numbers, it's actually only 2 billion, because if you so want to have like... as much as negative 2 billion represented too, you got to spend one of those bits somehow. And so a current computer today would be running 32 bit. At least, system? so for many years, okay. and that's what a 32 bit computer yeah, meant yeah, yeah, generally. Yeah. But okay. mo nowadays, most systems are actually 64 bits. But still, they couldn't count past. So a 64-bit system would would actually struggle to go past like 10 million. Or would it use a well, different no, method no. to get there? No, no, no. It would count. It could count as high as two to the 64. But that's crazy large oh, number. Oh, sorry. Of course it is. I'm so. thinking of doubling it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's much more. Bit. It's exponentially course, larger. And yes. I'm not. There maybe is an English word for that, but I don't know. Yeah. It. Okay. okay. But it's huge, and that should get us at least through our lifetimes until we need more. But but if we numbers. but we would actually have to keep doing that. We would. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Oh, so fun cool. fact, actually, yeah. that we talk about in CS50, computers generally still use 32 bits to keep track of time, like the clock in the top corner yes. of, or the bottom corner of your computer. Yeah. And the catch is that if you're only using 32 bits, you can count as high as like 4 billion or maybe 2 billion if there's negative numbers. And the way computers tell time is some humans years ago decided, you know what, let's just start counting the number of seconds from January 1st, 1970. <laughs> but there's a problem with this, because like eventually we will run out of patterns. Yeah. And so when the world first thought it was going to end in 2000, with the Y2K problem, so to yep. speak, when will the world next end, perhaps, um, so far as computers are concerned? Oh, well, it's going to be when 4 billion seconds or 2 billion seconds have passed since 1970. I feel like it's kind of soon. I read about this in a book. It is. Yeah, mark your calendars. 2038 is about as far okay. as we can go with 32 bits. So thankfully, the world is actually already moving to 64 bits and will be yeah. long gone before this is a problem again. But, but it really just boils down to very simple arithmetic operations and the representation of these, these digits. My, um, my favorite thing from what you just mentioned uh, is... When you said about uh, 2 to the 8 mm -hmm. being 255 and limiting and calling it 8-bit. So I know I made a previous video about the Pokemon catch formula mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's used in the Game Boy, original Game Boy Pocket. When you try and throw your Pokeball to catch your creature, it generates a random number between 0 and 255. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it's exactly that reason, because it's an 8-bit Game Boy and it can't generate a larger subset of random numbers. Yeah, no, that's exactly like, it. Yeah, I just, I loved it when I, when I just, at first I was like, <laughs> why 255? And then I was like... It's binary. Like, yeah. That realization was just, as a Pokemon fan, I loved it. <laughs> no, in a lot of games, too, there's one of the Lego uh, video games whereby you can only get some, uh, like, four, maybe, it's, I want to say it's like four billion coins or something like that. Yeah, and, it's, and the implication it's a binary is, thing again. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And yeah. in fact, if you think back to, like, games from yesteryear, like 8-bit games, which look very pixelated yep. and very simplistic, it's because they only had eight bits per pixel, per dot on the screen, so you only have so many colors of the rainbow yeah. to represent 
those yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I think we can stipulate now that in terms of what computer science is, inputs and outputs with some problem-solving process in between, I think we've at least got some mechanism now for representing the inputs and the outputs known as binary. Yes. But there is a problem. Computers do a lot more than just math, no offense. Uh, they also can say words in English or any human language, mm -hmm. not to mention graphics and video and sound. So let me ask you this. How could we go about representing text in English? Um, so my first thought would be some kind of code. So it's each letter or symbol or whatever you, let's start with the letter of the alphabet. Mm -hmm. You would assign each one a particular number and then you would represent that letter, therefore, through its number, which would be represented in binary. Okay. And what number should we represent, like, capital A with? Capital A. <laughs> okay, I didn't even think about capitals, so I'm guessing, <laughs> given there are 26 letters of the alphabet, I'm going to assume maybe capital A might be zero. Okay. So, very reasonable to think of representing the letter A as zero. Incorrect in the real world, but, <laughs> but perfectly reasonable. It just yeah. so happens that humans years ago decided somewhat non-obviously to use not zero, but number 65 in decimal. <laughs> so there is some rhyme and reason too. It's not zero, okay. but it could have been zero if yeah. we had just designed things a little bit differently. So let me ask um, a leading question. How might you represent the letter B? If it's a capital B, I'm going to assume it's 66. Indeed. So a capital B is going to be represented with the decimal number 66. And thankfully, C is 67, yep. D is 68, and so forth. And this is the so-called ASCII system. Um, no offense, it's the American Standard Code for Information <laughs> Interchange, but you, you have all used it as well. Yep. Um, and it's actually a subset that is a smaller portion of something called Unicode nowadays, mm -hmm. which represents not just A's and B's um, and letters of the English alphabet, but all human languages. Not yes. to mention emoji, too. Even those yeah, little yeah, pictograms yeah, yeah. you see are represented as numbers underneath the hood. Yeah. So given that, I think we can maybe um, throw some challenge problems your way. Would mm. you, shall I try is to spell something? Is it all going to be things? in capitals? Can I just... Yes, we will it. limit okay. it to the capitals, but maybe... Cause does it then go, so you would, once you've counted through 26 of them, would it then start again on the lowercase letters, or is it not that simple? Uh, you'd think that, but a lowercase <laughs> a is actually the number 97. <laughs> But lowercase b would be 98 okay. and so that. forth. Okay. Okay. And here is an actual fun fact for folks who like this level of detail. The distance between capital A uh -huh. and lowercase a, 65 to 97, is 32. Which and is... that is a power of 2, which actually is convenient. So you can actually convert uppercase to lowercase and lowercase to uppercase letters like Microsoft Word or Google Docs super easily by just, by just yeah, yeah, changing yeah. one bit, <laughs> one zero yeah, 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 to a one yeah. or vice versa, which that is actually kind of cool. So that's why they probably did it. Indeed. Okay. Yeah. All right. So ready for a challenge problem? Yes. All right. So I'm going to go ahead now and write down a byte of bits. So eight bits total. Okay. And the goal is going to be to convert that pattern of bits, yeah. the zeros and ones, into a decimal number and in turn into a letter of the English alphabet. And yes. thankfully, we don't have to figure every letter out on our own. If capital 65 is a, a, a sorry. <laughs> if capital A is 65, if capital yeah. B is 66, we can actually use this whole cheat sheet, the so-called ASCII chart here yes. on the screen, to actually map all of the letters yeah. to numbers as needed. All right, so just to guide you, I'm going to go ahead and write some placeholders here, the columns. So yeah. this will be the ones column, the twos column, yeah. the fours column, the eights column, the sixteens column, thirty twos column. 64 column, and I'm afraid we don't have room for the last one. This will be the very <laughs> narrow yeah. 128 gotcha. uh, column. Yeah. All right, so the first number I'm going to spell out in binary is going to be 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. And to think we now, don't communicate online, like this as humans. Thank God. No. <laughs> a single letter is all of that. But okay. I think if we just multiply each of the ones by the column they're in, we yep. should get the number. 64 after. plus 8, so that's going to be 72. So the number we want is 72. 72. Okay, so hold that thought. Let's okay. do one more then. Yeah. Like 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So that's now, 73. Th that's true. For the astute viewer, <laughs> it's the same except for the very last digit, yes. which is a 1 instead of a 0. So of course we have 72 and 73. So if I were to write down what was sent here on the whiteboard in uh, decimal, it's 72 and 73. So if we now look at our ASCII chart, yeah. what message have I just sent to you? So if A, in is, English. A is 65, 66, 67, 68, 72. So it's the 
Eight letter of the alphabet A B C D E H H I Hi. Indeed. So this is how you would say or or send hi digitally. And yeah. so in fact, when like you send a text message or get an email or anything like that, really what the computer is doing is sending a pattern of zeros and ones somehow electronically or wirelessly that yeah. is encoding binary digits. Yeah. But you can do the mental math or the computer can do the actual math converting it to the 72 and 73, which in turn can be converted to, of course, the letter. So hi. Perfect. Hi. All right. shall, we, <laughs> shall we spell one, one thing else? Yes. All right. So let me go ahead and erase our two letter word. And this one's going to be a little harder, 50% harder. It's going to be a three letter <laughs> okay. word. And I'll write the whole thing out and you can figure it out okay. as uh, folks online do yep. as well. So first word, or first letter, zero, one, zero. Zero, 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 one, zero. Uh huh. Second letter. Zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 one. It's not so easy this time. Third letter and final. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, one. And for those at home, here is the pattern of three bytes, each of which represents an ASCII letter yep. in English. What have I told you um, to say or do? So you have got 66, so it's B. That was fast, okay. <laughs> B. Um, and then you've got 64, 72, 76, 78, 79. Oh god, 14 letter of the alphabet is N? O, M, N, O, O. You're saying O the letter or O it's not N? <laughs> I'm struggling that. Okay. So if A is 65, then I think it's O. It, it wouldn't was. make sense if it was N, would it? It wouldn't spell a word. Okay, no. B O. Okay, and then you've got 64 plus 16, so that's gonna be 80, 84, 5, 6, 87. So 87, so that's the 23rd letter of the alphabet. So X, Y, Z. Bow? Bow? Be able to <laughs> yes, please take a bow. <laughs> please take a bow. A bow, indeed. So um, this is how then we could spell any word in English. And in turn, if we were using a larger set of mappings than just A through Z, we could spell out in any human language uh, or even pictorially with emoji some uh, other letters or characters as well. Yeah. All right. So I guess this would work then for um, like how. So in the ASCII system, does it go from like 0 to 255? Or, or it does. No, there would be more no, as it, you continue to add new symbols and letters? Really good question. So originally ASCII was actually only 7 bits, so 0 to 127, but then there's okay. extended ASCII, which is 0 through 255. Okay. And like in the middle of that is like the A's through the Z's, both yes. uppercase and lowercase. There's some weird symbols essentially at the beginning. There's punctuation and other yep. things elsewhere. Yep. But Unicode, which is that superset of ASCII, which added support for not just American uh, language, yes. like English uh, in this case, um, but also for all other human languages and yeah. plenty of room for emoji as well. Okay, so now it just goes on to as high as it needs to go. Well, basically. now we, we're essentially we keep, using... We can continue to add to it. There's no reason not Correct. to, right? You just have a longer string of zeros and ones. Exactly. Unicode exactly. will typically have you use either 8 bits, which is yep. common, or maybe uh, 16 or 24 or even 32 bits. So we've got 4 billion possibilities. Okay. Frankly, gotcha. this is one of the reasons why we have so many emoji now, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a lots of room it's for It's like them. a whole thing, isn't it, where they pick which ones to add to the Unicode, like... Yeah, no, there is actually you know a whole you've process. Made it as yes. a, as you know you've made it as an emoji. If you've if been You've codified forever, yeah. yes, digitally. <laughs> so, so just to follow the the rabbit down the hole here, if we can clearly represent letters, just as we can represent numbers. And just off the top of your head, how could we go about representing like, like colors or images, which are just made up of colors, or videos or audio? Oh, is that just then how you're representing each pixel? Mm -hmm. Yep, each dot on the screen. Yep. Yeah. So, so you have you have a number. So, if you're doing like a, a still image, right? Let's imagine it's. 1920 by 1080, the YouTube okay. thumbnail size. Okay, nice. <laughs> and then you've got that many pixels. Then each one would have a um, binary value, which would correspond mm -hmm. to a color. Exactly. And so, in fact, what computers typically do is use 24 bits per pixel, per dot, and eight of those specify how much, how red that dot should be, eight of those specify how green that should be, uh, and eight of those specify how blue that dot should be, a.k.a. Yep. RGB, red, green, blue. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And from awesome. images, how do we get to videos? 
uh, well, video is just a series of images put next to one another. Yeah. So, like, I know that, again, I know that from shooting, I'm shooting in 30 frames per second, so this yeah. is just 30 still images per second played one after the other. Exactly. And how about audio, which is not quite the same progression there? Ooh. Um, Musical notes, for instance. So, I... Ooh, there are waves. So okay. sound is a wave. So I'm wondering whether you're representing the amplitude of your wave at certain okay. points. You could. You could. That's a very analog representation, okay, right, I yeah. would say. Okay. How else could you do it? Um, Think about a piano is my sort of go-to for a mental model. Okay. When you so, hit, a, hit a key on the piano. Yeah. You're playing a certain note. Okay. So just each note has a binary representation. Probably. Yep, we could do that. Like A, B, C, maybe sharp, yeah. flat yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, has a representation. Okay. And what yeah. else should you be, what else are you hearing when you choose a note? There's so a, there's a volume, volume, there's a, maybe a pitch or a tone. I'm not very musical, but there yep. are certain things you can adjust. Yes, exactly. Volume, I mean, could literally be like, how hard are you hitting the yeah. key? So some yeah, yeah, number, yeah. like that small number, big number. Yeah. And then maybe the duration, like how long is your finger down yes. on the key? So maybe okay. three numbers at least to represent a musical note? So then, I guess the reason I didn't think that would be how it would necessarily work is it would, if it would, be, it would be fine if you were like playing, uh, let's say, actual music really well, mm -hmm. where every note sounds exactly like it's meant to, mm -hmm. like a piano. But like us talking... Is it still being represented as I'm talking now and it's picking out which notes and tones and pitches and giving those a representation? It could be. So like okay. there's many different file formats. Right, yeah, yeah, Anytime yeah. you've yes. seen dot something in a file, it just means how it's being yeah. represented. Okay. So yes, and this is it relates to like sampling rate. Like how many times per second do we yeah. want to record in some form like the sounds coming out of your mouth? Yeah. And we can quantize digitally what is otherwise like an analog waveform of sorts by just sampling yeah. it fast enough so it really sounds like you and yeah. not and not something else. And so at the end of the day, like all the computer understands is these zeros and ones. And so these zeros and ones really are just context dependent. So for instance, if you open like a calculator program or Excel, those zeros and ones are probably gonna be interpreted as numbers. Yeah. But if you open up Google Docs or like an SMS program, like it'll probably be interpreted as uh, letters. If you open up Photoshop, it'll be interpreted as colors and so forth. This is just making me think that like, this video we're recording, if you could write down the ones and zeros that are being stored. I mean, you literally could. You probably could like I mean, wrap it around If you the download world. this video yeah. as an MP4 or whatever, I mean, it's literally a sequence of zeros and ones. And that would be probably long enough to like wrap around the world or something as a string. That's a lot. We'd need to bring in someone, uh, <laughs> someone from Future another field for that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> indeed. Well, I think then we're settled on the fact that we can represent information digitally using just zeros and ones. Yep. And this is great because honestly, at the end of the day, as sophisticated and fancy as computers seem, like really all they themselves are getting as input is electricity. So either like there's electricity flowing or not, yep. the light bulb is on or if it's off, so to speak, in the physical world. And so I'll stipulate that computers can really easily represent zeros and ones because yep. it's just two things. A, B, black, white, it's just two things they need to keep track of. Just like you can throw on a light switch, turn it off, that's two things. Yep. There's millions of tiny little switches in a computer called transistors that are doing just that to represent these zeros yep. and ones. But there's one final flourish. If we want to talk about ultimately computer science, we've got that black box that are in between these inputs and outputs. So this is problem solving at its core. And this black box might really be storing what we'd call algorithms. Mm -hmm. Algorithms are step-by-step -step instructions for solving some problem. And if you're a programmer, you implement those algorithms in code, whether it's C or C++ or Java or anything else. But there's no reason to use code or a computer to implement Mm -hmm. an algorithm, we can sort of just um, fancy it verbally and walk through the steps um, in English or really any human language. So in fact, if you consider, for instance, a very common problem of like someone's mobile, which has a contacts app, yeah. inside of that contacts app are typically lots of friends and family and colleagues alphabetized, like maybe yep. A through Z. And there's usually like a search box at the top. Uh -huh. yep. So if you were Apple or Google designing a phone, and one of your users typed in T-O-M or D-A-V-I-D, yeah. how could you, how would you go about finding it in this tall list of names? So if, uh, I'm just thinking if they were to, if I'm searching for you in, in my phone and I type in a D, mm -hmm. then is it, I, I don't think this is how it works, but my first thought based on what we just discussed mm -hmm. is to be, 
it converts that into the binary number and then the way it's stored is also in binary. So it looks for is the start of the contact the same binary number as the thing I've typed in. Yeah, I mean, that is true. Because if it's like A is 65, so that's 66, 67, 68 would be D. So you're saying you look for the pattern that represents 68. 68. As to how I've saved it in the phone. Yeah, so the only problem though with this approach, not a huge deal for names that start with D, is that you're probably going to have to waste time looking at all of the A's and be like, no, no, that's not it. All the B's. Right, yeah, you've there, got to zoom it. through that whole, and it could obviously be really long list. Yes. yes. So if the person's yeah, name yeah, yeah. starts with Z, you've wasted a huge amount Searching of time. Searching all the way through. Yeah. Yep. Now, you could be a little smart, and if it starts with Z, well, you could just start from the bottom. But yes. the reality is there's going to be that sweet spot in the middle yep. where if the person's name starts with M, you got to start from the top or yep. the bottom or something. Yep. But in practice, like, we can actually do this much faster. Like, we can do it exponentially faster than that. Yeah. But why don't we, like, this to something uh, that I grew up with, which was this year technology. <laughs> so this... I remember the yellow pages as well. Okay, so yeah. this is a phone book, and it's really just the analog, the physical incarnation of like a contacts app. And yeah. indeed, wonderfully, it's sorted from uh, uh, A to Z in this yeah. case. Um, Strictly speaking, this is all kind of a, no pun intended, a white lie because these are the yellow pages from America. <laughs> and the yellow pages don't even have people at all. They only have um, companies. Yes. But it's really, really hard to find white pages now, which were the humans. So we'll go with the company instead. Yeah. But the companies are alphabetized from A to Z yes. in this phone book. So for instance, if you were to be asked, as I'm now asking you, okay. to find David's company, yep. how could you go about finding it in this physical? So what I would... I think I know nice. you'll go with this because I wouldn't start with like the beginning. Okay. I would sort of look and be like, well, I know D is sort of here, so I would open it. Yeah, I don't think computers can just do sort of here, though. Okay. I think you um, need to be a little more precise for Well, us. I know it's in the first half. Okay, why? Because D is in the first half of the alphabet. Okay, that's true. But I feel like you're making this harder. Like, do okay. what's the simplest way you could find David just like you were verbalizing earlier in this physical medium? Flicking through it. Okay, so go ahead and act that out if you could for. Okay, that that, that is not what you said you were going to do. You were going to start with the A's, remember? Oh, oh, sorry, as in if I was going from the beginning. Oh, I see. You're right, right. right. So if I was going through the beginning, yeah, and I'd be. And this is perfectly reasonable, it. right? Because yeah, you're going from like, A to no, B to no. C. And then we just we hit caterers and clinics, <laughs> computers, <laughs> Dentists. ironically. Dentists. Got so David's there. company must be in that area yes. there. Between cremation services and dentists. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so within this phone book then, let's suppose there's like a thousand pages because they're yep. pretty thin. Um, you know, you might have gone through a couple hundred at least yeah, to yeah, find yeah. me yep. there. But sure. was your algorithm, step by step, page by page, correct? Mm, was it correct? And um, correct for us means given the input to the problem, you get the right output like David's company is the intended output here in their number. I mean, yes, I feel like I got there. I, ju I just can see that it would not in any way be efficient for a large phone book. Yeah, so in computer science, this is one of the distinctions we make. It's one thing for your algorithm to be yeah. correct, because that should go without saying, because if you're not writing correct algorithms or code, what, what's the point of it all? Yeah. But it'd be nice if it's better designed, more mm. efficient. So, yep. you know, back in grade school, I, I was got pretty good, speaking to mathematicians, at counting by two. So what if you were to do two pages at a time? Ah, I see. So right, I think yeah, that'd get us so to David's company twice, twice as, fast. as fast. Yes. But is that exactly. correct? We'd still get the same answer. Oh no, we might not. We could oh. be we could we could skip to like you said, I could skip from two and maybe I go from cremation and then I end up on dentist. <laughs> yes, okay, if we want to keep focusing on that. Yeah, so you know, David's <laughs> like company about David, I might could. get sandwiched in yeah, between yeah, yeah, two yeah. pages. Yep. Yep. Now I don't think it's a complete loss because if you go slightly too far to dentists, D E no, well. you could go back one page mm -hmm. and so it's like twice as fast plus one more step. Yeah. So that's not bad. But I think your other instincts of jumping roughly to the middle were pretty spot on. And frankly, back in the day when we used to call people, we'd go roughly to the middle and, and then, then I'd know again. a little something about where to go next. Yes. So go ahead and act that out for us if you could. So find David's company your okay. intuitively faster way. I intuitively so faster way. way. So I'm like, okay, so that's like way too fast. And You're I'm in like, the okay, pizza somewhere. section somehow. And so. somehow I'm back with dentists. There's so a then, lot of dentists in, in uh, America, apparently. <laughs> but now, so I'm assuming I've done roughly a half and then a half again. So I'm approximately a quarter of the way through. But now I don't want to go another half. You don't want to go another half. Because I know I'm quite close. 
you are quite close, but which direction? So for instance, suppose I'll that this happens bit. to be caterers here. Suppose this is caterers. Then I know to go this way a little bit. Okay, correct. So I think, I mean, but you're kind of losing track of where you're going, right? Like, cause mm -hmm. now you don't want to go halfway here and then halfway no, I, there. No, I don't want to go halfway there. So you know, why don't we go ahead and be a little more destructive. I don't need this bag. <laughs> I don't want to carry it home with me. So let's go ahead and not just metaphorically divide and conquer this problem. Go ahead and physically divide this problem <laughs> in half and half and half again and again. Okay. So go roughly to the middle. Yeah. And let's, let's propose out. you're in the M section. Okay. Well, it's I, but yeah. All right. I'll go to. <laughs> well, this one, but apparently there's more. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of adverts I's and D's at the beginning. Right, we, but okay, we're in the okay. We're in the this... motorcycle section. Yeah. Do we need any of the motorcycle section? So I don't need anything to the right. Nothing to the right. So tear the problem in half. Very Woo. well done. Okay. So we don't need that. Yeah. So we can like just throw that problem. In half. <laughs> but now we have what the A through L section. Yeah. So what do we do next? So I go roughly halfway. Yep, good. So like, again, approximately there. And now Apparently we're... Apparently I'm in C. There's a lot of Cs too. So we're so, in chiropractors. Yep, so I know that it's to the right, so I want to throw in so a left. get rid of the chiropractors and everything before them. Throw that half away. <laughs> so okay. now what? Now uh, I want to go half again. Okay. Um, just up there, and then I don't need to rip it anymore. Oh, because... Really destroyed it, but that yeah. one's going to go. All right, that half goes away. Because I got to I. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same again. Again. Roughly halfway. Presumably. Which is engineers, so I don't okay. want F on with. Oh, was by me. I'm in there. <laughs> okay, but keep going. <laughs> yeah. One or then, two more. Yeah. All right, so roughly Open to the page. middle. Is Full page ad, not helping us. Dentist. Dentist. Dentist, so. Throw that one. Okay, no dentists. And then, uh, oh, there's not many left now. Uh, <laughs> but that is, that is exactly the point. Now I'm at C, so. Copying services. One. Cremation services and dentists, I found are. it. So yes, that's where David's company is apparently sandwiched between those two. But <laughs> yeah. notice here what was happening, like you were kind of flying through it because on every iteration, every cycle or loop through this process, you were not only tearing it in half, but you were more importantly throwing half of the problem away. So if yeah. we started with like a thousand pages, you went down not to 999, 998, and you didn't go even by two, 998, 996, 994. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You went from 1,000 to 500 to 250 to 125 to da, 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 one single page. Tragically, David's company doesn't exist and isn't even on this page, <laughs> but you flew through the problem in a way yeah. that was fundamentally faster. Mm -hmm. And yep. so here then is how we might describe an algorithm. We did it entirely verbally. We even acted it out. <laughs> a computer really, when executing code that humans have written, is just doing the same thing step by step, but at a lower binary level. Yeah. That was super fun. Well, thank you. Very well done. <laughs> what, a, what a delightful tour through an American phone book. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. I think this then is, is computer science. That's it. Yeah. I feel like, loved it. That was genuinely really fun. This this is how much fun CS50 is, right? So, <laughs> so this feels like the perfect opportunity to say thank you. And also, where should everybody go if they want to sample this for real? Indeed. The Harvard class is freely available to anyone online. You can watch everything at youtube.com slash CS50, or you can enroll for free at cs50.edx.org and follow along. Because though I claim this is computer science, this is only week zero of computer science. So yeah. there's all this and more, including practical programming as well. I, I may do exactly that. <laughs> so yes, I will put all the links in the description so you can just click directly on them. and. Um, yeah, I, I genuinely feel now like I want to go and learn computer science. Yeah. So. Well, hello, computer science fans. Yes, that could be a future Tom Rock's computer <laughs> science coming soon. Um, so, David, thank you so much once again. Thank you, as always, to all of you for watching. Do go and check out CS50. It's awesome. Uh, and also, please do remember to subscribe to my channel if you have enjoyed this, uh, and that way you will get notifications the next time I do ridiculous tearing in half of phone book style demos, which is now going to become my, th maybe that's my new thing. Hello, CS fans. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, thank you so much, and I'll see you all very soon.